Held hostage at a car dealership. Oh yes, being held hostage is one of the more evil underhanded tricks played by car dealers and there's two ways they do it. Don't let this happen to you. Hi, I'm Kevin Hunter, also known as The Homework Guy and author of Is That the Best You Can Do? Today's amazing video is brought to you by The Homework Guy team, home of super high intensity training for car buyers and a very savvy group of auto experts to boot. To the disappointment of some car dealers that really just need to get out of the business, we're going to help you outmaneuver car dealers who would try to hold you hostage. If you appreciate the help we provide car buyers with the Homework Guy videos and you want to support our efforts, there are plenty of ways to get on board to help us do this. There are two ways a car dealer can hold you hostage, with your driver's license or your car keys. Since everyone has the potential of running into a problem with their driver's license, let's start with that first. You arrive at the dealer, find a car you like, and ask to take it for a test drive. They ask you for your driver's license, which seems pretty natural, right? You might ask, do they really need your driver's license? Well, car dealers claim they have to ensure that you're current with the state and actually know how to drive. They might also claim it's for insurance purposes, but that's simply not true. But besides the potential of using the license to hold you hostage, there's a darker reason for getting your driver's license. The truth is, that they can and often do use the information for purposes that are not in your best interest. Believe it or not, providing your driver's license for a test drive can provide all the information necessary to check your credit. Many people say this isn't true, but have you talked directly to Experian, Equifax, or TransUnion? I'd invite those companies to come and comment right here on this video. You'd be surprised to learn that a car dealer can claim they had verbal permission or a permissible purpose, and the credit agencies have confirmed for several years that your credit file can be accessed without a social security number. How does a driver's license help a dealer get access to your personal information? Top credit agencies state that their credit report access keys are your name, address, and date of birth, all of which is clearly printed on your driver's license. And now you learned something today, didn't you? Well, what does the law say about this? Under the Federal Fair Credit Reporting Act, a car dealer must always get your permission to look at your credit report. However, as mentioned, there's a gray area. The dealer can get that permission a couple of ways, either in writing when you sign a release or a loan application or by implication without your signature if there is a legitimate business need. According to the FTC, simply shopping around, checking a few deals doesn't constitute a legitimate business need by itself. Rather, it's only when you've gone further along into an obvious purchase transaction, that's their words, that your actions qualify as business that possibly involves a need to check your credit. The question is, when you spend a few minutes with a salesman and then you go out for that test drive, have you automatically initiated an obvious purchase transaction? Dealers skirt a fine line when they claim that it does, but think about something. Have you ever wondered why they have you check and sign so many different documents, things that seem to be pretty inconsequential for you? Well, for a shady car dealer, your signature or a check mark on documents that don't seem to matter could be all the proof they need that you're initiating an obvious purchase transaction. Now, besides using the information on your license inappropriately, there's a second part to this little problem. This is hostage situation number one. Many car buyers report to us that their driver's license just disappears into some back room. The salesman comes back without it, claiming some administrative assistant in the back is making a copy. Well, you just kind of shrug it off, go take your test drive, not suspecting a thing. In fact, you kind of forgot about it. That was the start of the hostage situation. Later, you get to the point where the deal isn't going anywhere and now you want to go. You get up to leave, but then you go, you know what? Where's my driver's license? So you say, I want my driver's license back, thinking they'll just hand it back to you. But they don't. Instead, they delay, perhaps pretending to call, or perhaps they actually do call and they say, can you have Sally bring Mr. Jones' driver's license up, please? And then they tell you that Sally's in the middle of something, but we'll be right up as soon as she's done. You think it'll be just a few minutes. So you sit and chat while you're waiting. The driver's license doesn't come. The sales pitch continues with the salesman hoping that you'll waffle. 
So now you have two reasons to avoid giving them your driver's license. The credit stuff and them holding you hostage. You don't want them running your credit without your permission, and you don't want to be held hostage at the dealership either. Next are your car keys. I'm specifically talking about the keys for the vehicle that you might be planning to trade in. This is hostage situation number two. The dealer has to drive your car, so they ask for your keys, and a manager or a person known as the trade appraiser takes your car for a test drive. They come back and head into some back room to do some figuring. Well, your keys are still in their pocket and finally end up on the desk in some back office somewhere. Again, you get to a place in your negotiations and then you're ready to roll. The price just isn't right and they're ripping you off on your trade. You know those lowball offers and you just want to get out of there only to discover that you don't have your keys. The pretense of getting keys for you goes just like the pretense of getting your driver's license. Sally, can you bring up uh, Mr. Jones' keys for him? They call. Well, you sit and wait. They pitch you on more reasons you should stay and buy. 30 minutes goes by and you're starting to get a little irritated. You know, many car buyers have reported to us that they called the police because the nonsense went so far. Held hostage with either a driver's license or your own car keys is completely avoidable. So is the little problem of them running your credit without your permission. So, here's how you handle both situations. Before you think about going car shopping, you're going to do two things. First, make your own paper copy of your driver's license. If you plan to make more than one stop, make enough copies for every dealer you plan to stop at. Print clearly on the copy. Permission is denied for a credit check. Make sure that's on the copy of the paper of your driver's license that you give them. And then when you go for a test drive, keep your driver's license card in your pocket. If they claim that they need a copy, you're ready for them. Give them the copy you produced with the proper notice I just mentioned on it. Next is your trade-in. Go to the hardware store and make a backup key for your car. Keep it in your wallet or purse or somewhere that's safe. It's a good idea to have a backup key anyway. If you ever decide you want to have the car appraised by a dealer, never give them your original keys. Only give them the backup key. If they start playing games, you're free to go. You can always call the dealer back and tell them you'll be right back to pick up your backup key. In both cases, the dealer can't keep you there against your will. And in the case of your driver's license, they can't use the personal information on it either for purposes that you didn't intend. I hope that now you understand the importance of having copies of your driver's license and your keys and never turning over the actual card or the actual key to a car dealer. They are yours. Don't let a car dealer get their little mitts on them and you'll never be held hostage against your will at a car dealership. If you appreciate the video today, consider giving us that great big thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Include hashtag the homework guy. And make sure to join us on Facebook and Twitter too. We post notifications and other updates on our other social media sites and answer car buying questions there too. If you love what we do and want to contribute with a tip, the PayPal and Cash App links that you see appearing here will be easy to find in that description box down below or on our website. Here's the best part. We don't just help car buyers. 100% of our tips go to a friend of ours, Maggie. This amazing young lady shines the light of faith, hope, and love in the lives of young people every day. We enthusiastically sponsor her mission of love and kindness, and Maggie thanks you in advance. Just like the Homework Guy channel, Maggie knows that you change the world by what you do. Your support from Maggie is very much appreciated. If you can't do a tip but want to help us out, get that word out. Well, the Homework Guy team loves it when you share our videos with your family and friends and encourage others to subscribe to the channel. As our following grows, each and every one of you are playing a role in helping defeat the dishonest operators in the car business who still seem to not learn that fairness and honesty is the best business model. Thanks everyone for coming back. We'll see you on our next video. You guys rock and you know it. I'm Kevin Hunter. Until next time, take care everyone.